couple more minutes. So we're going to do uh, take a few questions from chat, I think. Um, although, please, Amazing. if there's anything that I left off of the sheet that you're like, oh, wait, no, we must talk about it. Let me know. Uh, no, we it. hit it all. Mm -hmm. There's there's so many bizarre little odds and ends in here. It's we 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 hit the major stuff for sure. And the link to that is running through chat right now, or it's in the description you are reading, depending on where you're watching this video. So you can poke around and see all of the, the magic that makes five <laughs> so incredibly fun. Uh, all right, like, I've got the question bot up. I remember how it works. There we are. Um, all right. Uh, Bane TBC, first question up, is five for or against carrots? Absolutely for. It's, you know, is there a bit of a, there might be a little bit of like a, how do you call it? You know, people people can crack their jokes about carrots, me being a rabbit folk and all that. Carrots are delicious. It's not a rabbit thing. Everyone should eat carrots. If you don't like carrots, there's some, that's, that's about you. They're delicious. It's a little bit of sugar. Perfect. Nice root vegetable. Um, let's see. Uh, I, oh, I love this. It's Yakisoba wants to know, how will you keep track of all these details and abilities, especially not having gained them over time? It's an excellent question. Um, number one, the service provided by D&D Beyond allows you to keep excellent track of your character sheet with all of the advanced features and mouse over text, allowing me to be able to run an extremely high level character for the first time uh, with no fuss, no muss. Thanks, D&D Beyond. Um, number two, I would say, and that's actually, that's just true. I did, I did a funny TV presenter voice. That's great. D&D Beyond is amazing. Um, number two, I will probably, uh, uh, in, in the, in the Roland Mulligan household here, we are huge flow sheet people. Um, so I will probably, and this is something that, that was gifted to us by Abria Iyengar. During this Dimension 20, the seven, no spoilers here, Abria made these beautiful hand-drawn, like bullet journal-esque flow sheets for action economy on people's turns. Like we had some people playing that had not played that much D&D &D before. And Abria, who is, listen, you know, it, as people who watch Battle for Beyond, like Iyengar and Mulligan, you know, a pro bono rules lawyers, Abria's system mastery is second to none. And she truly did like the sweetest thing of like creating a little flow chart and a little rubric for turn optimization for our players that had not played as much D&D &D before. And it was like the sweetest thing in the world. So incredibly helpful. Um, and now I look at it and I'm like, I want to do that. So I will probably make a little flow sheet for myself um, uh, about, you know, turn optimization um, uh, to keep track of these abilities. Because again, a lot of these abilities are passive, uh, but also a lot of that is definitely helped because D&D Beyond in the actions column, you can separate out through bonus action and reaction as filters on your actions, which is great. Literally when I'm playing using D&D Beyond and my turn ends, I go to my character sheet and go to actions and toggle over to reaction while everyone else is taking their turns so that I sit on my abilities that could be potentially helpful on other people's turns. Oh, that's so really, good. Really and handy. folks watching who might not yeah. know, you can also take pretty much anything on your sheet and customize it to display as attack. If you just want to not forget it's there um, and that will just pop up right under swinging your sword. So if there's a spell you know you want to use all the time, if there's something else that's your go-to, if you want to get your sneak attack right in front of your eyes, um, just you just right-click on that, go to customize, and click that little display as attack box. Um, it is one of my favorite ways to be like, oh, right, that thing that I want to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Incredible. Let's see. We have the good Harold. Thank you for your question. You asked about that plus seventeen to initiative, uh, and and uh, I it's the, a distinctive and amazing uh, question. Um, it's silly. It could be higher. It could be way higher. If I had wanted to optimize just for initiative, we could have gotten that to five. Five is ten. Fifteen. We could have gotten that up to twenty one. For sure. We could have gotten that at the 21, <laughs> but we're optimizing for damage initiative as a secondary consideration. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, but like, because you're adding your whiz, you can bring that higher, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, Elven Rule asks, how would you feel if you were the DM and one of your players played a character as broken as five? 
I know how that feels. I will feel it this way on Saturday when I play my 13-year home game where one of my players one time for a, a one-shot character made a brilliant energy wagon, meaning he played a fiend of possession that could possess a, a mundane object, and then he got a feat from a, from an, a third part, from not a third party, from, from a, a tertiary third book published by Wizards of the Coast that allowed you to change the size of targets for certain character abilities so he could then possess size huge objects so then he would possess them and then he could give himself magical item abilities one of which was brilliant energy which means that you bypass all sorts of armor class so in other words my buddy jack turned into a wagon made out of lightsabers and he could run over people so in other words if you're asking what would i do as the dm it's not hypothetical i'll tell you what you would do you figure it out you figure it out okay <laughs> I have six of the most brilliant players in history that are all 19th level in 3.5, which is busted to bits. There's a reason they moved on. They ruined it. They published too many rules and they had to stop because it had, it had come apart at the seams, okay? I'm not saying anything that Watsi would disagree with. It's absolutely true. It was untenable. OK, it's the most beautiful system in the world. And it is a riddled, you know, quantum, you know, eight dimensional shape of rules that intersect with each other. So what I would say is, uh, uh, if, you know, I, I understand what this is. And the trick is this, you know, I, I hate to boil it down. And I say this knowing how much work it has created for me as a dungeon master when my players bring this level of system mastery. So know that I'm saying this with the full empathy of how hard it is. Get good. You got to get good. You get good. People bring a busted character. You got a whole monster manual, baby. You can homebrew. I can homebrew. They can't homebrew. If I can't figure it out, that's on me. Okay? It's a busted character. I've been through so much. <laughs> These I'm, I'm just here. If I, so, I, I, I want a, a whole extra uh, DDB Live after dark that's just like, all right, what, what happened here? How did this go? Uh, but yes, I have so fire many. Fire, I have so exactly. much to get off my chest. They've really, they've really done it to me. They've really done it to me. <laughs> uh, let's see. They won. I'm sorry. I know that. I'm just, I'm, you have to get to get to the next thing. They one hit my big bad in the last combat. They one hit him. Single hit, dead. What do you do? I don't know what you do. Oh, they clean through. Break. Um, twin brother out for revenge. Out for re yes. Ex there you go. Exactly. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. But yes, what were you going to say? No, that I, I I got sincerely interested in that, that that question, but um okay, let's see. Um, we rooftop. Oh, I'm so sorry. Rooftop asked, "How does that first round go against an undead or fiend?" Uh, and I think I ran us out of time, but even better, I think is the short answer there. You're a gloom stalker and you're a paladin oath of devotion. Um, uh, uh, well, it would be it would be uh, it would be an extra fifty four points of damage, right? Because it's another two d. It's an extra d eight times two for each attack average of that is is nine so nine times six is 54 so it would so if it was undead or fiend it would be it would i think take us north of 600 points of damage uh, oh god have... and i can bone oh, sorry and i can bonus action cast a spell so in other words if i don't have to cast haste on that round if i'm in hiding and can cast mm -hmm. haste from hiding i could also sorcery point bonus action and i think fireball them and do another 8d6 damage on top of that as well. With the quick and spell ability, of course. It's incredible. Uh, let's see. Oh my gosh, you all have sent so many wonderful questions. Uh, we have just a couple minutes here. Um, you don't, if you don't have all three, let me know. Um, but uh, Deborah Rukai wanted to know tips for people who want to get good at improv. Mm. I would say my tips, so uh, I actually must disagree with the premise of the question. Um, mm. Getting good at improv cannot be accomplished through tips. Uh, there are tips that you can give to help someone with their improv training, but nothing will make the, nothing will get you good more than practice and working with a coach and getting reps, right? So, you know, 
the question is well well received, and I know what you mean by the question, but just in the phrasing of it, I think there's something interesting to talk about, right? And that interesting thing is often, and I see this a lot with like advice about DMing, where people will be like, what are your DMing tips? What's the little diamond you can give me that will significantly move the needle in terms of what I feel as the development of my skill set? And I think what's important to point out is that the little diamonds, those little things, like the, the, the thing that I could say to you in a fraction of a second, um, is such a smaller slice of the pie chart than reps. It's such a smaller Having slice repetition. of the pie chart than... Yeah, uh, repetition, right? Then like actually doing the thing. Um, it's also why, why I know it sounds so cliche when dungeon masters, or in this case for this question, like improvisers tell you like, just start, just get out there and do it. I know I've been on the other side of that advice. And you go like, you are telling me to do this, but you have no idea how embarrassed I'll be if I do it badly. You're giving me bad advice. Telling me to just start is too risky. You're already good at this. So it's totally, it's easy for you to say, just start. You, you improviser person, you dungeon master person. Yes, it's very easy to say, just start. But the reason I'm saying that is not, I'm not saying it glibly. I'm not saying it because, um, you know, because, because I'm underestimating your anxiety around wanting to do well your first time. What I'm saying is not, I'm not predicting how your first session is going. What I'm talking about is efficiency. And the honest to God truth is three hours of running your first Dungeons and Dragons session will teach you more than watching a hundred hours of DMing tips. It just will. You actually doing it, it's, it's efficiency. It's a better fuel source. You running the session is just going to teach you so much more. It just really is. There's nothing, there's no amount of lis listening to, you know, like it, it's, it's almost, it's like any kind, it's almost like a, a performance is like athletics, right? Like if you, if you're trying to become an incredible athlete, how many YouTube videos about running are you going to watch before you go out and run? And like, nothing's going to do more for your ability as going out and running. Right. So it's I promise it's not glib. I promise it's not a dismissive thing of like, just get out there and do it, Slugger. It's like to become great at improv, the, the, there is there there, you know, there's books you can get. You can get the UCB manual. You can get, you know, uh, a, you know, truth and comedy. You can watch this bunch of great improv resources online. You can watch. And I can tell you the fundamentals of like, listen to your scene partner or like say yes. And right. I can do that. But actual the academic understanding of listening to your scene partner is not what you're looking to develop you are looking to understand listening to your scene partner in your nervous system like your non-central nervous system you need it in your muscle memory you need it to be mm. second nature uh and that only happens with lots and lots and lots of boring practice it's a great answer. And and for many of us who are a certain kind of nerd who are like, if it works in theory, it should just automatically translate. It can be very frustrating to be like, what do you mean? I understand how it works and I can't do it yet. Um, but uh, that's yeah. it's as it turns out, like I, I just just to unnecessarily back you up there. I spent decades as just a player and I learned more from realizing what I didn't know how to do in my first time DMing um, than than because it just you get so much done cognitively in that like oh i'm gonna need this i'm gonna need to know that i'm gonna need to do this part and i can it's a little janky but it's working um and it's joyful and everyone should try it okay that was my a million <laughs> percent. i totally I, I totally totally agree and i love the example too of like what are the things i don't know and again like you're saying academic understanding is only one type of understanding um baseball and physics are very deeply related but if you want to get good at baseball you should not open a physics textbook. And I see why you might want to. You're like, well, the whole game seems to be about the ball leaving the bat at, a, at an escape velocity for the park. So we should probably crack open a book about escape velocity and about inertia and about the laws of physics and movement. You can do that. And it may actually, to some degree, inform your baseball game. It will not be as good uh, a, a training as going to the batting cages and taking swings with the bat. Like that's, that's going to be the thing that does it. Right. Um, so that's my advice. 
I love this. Uh, let's see. We a quick question, and this will have to be as I let you go. Uh, thank you all so much uh, uh, for for sending your amazing questions today. I, I hopefully we will be able to resume this at some point. But I had a lot of five related questions, so thank you for letting me take so much of today's time understanding how this incredible bunny works. Um, I will ask. Uh, actually, I like two very quick last questions. Um, Junker Vlad, watching you speak about D&D and chat with chat, uh, are there other places people can hear you talk about D&D? I am paraphrasing this question uh, for the where can people find you and look out for your stuff or hear more about your D&D thoughts? Oh, uh, uh, more more about D&D stuff. Um, uh, so I, I am the Dungeon Master for a show called Dimension 20. It is College Humor's D&D actual play show. You can go and check it out at dropout.tv where we have all the episodes up. We're in the middle of an awesome sci-fi adventure called A Starstruck Odyssey right now, um, uh, which has been so, so fun and cool. Um, but if you want to check out some of our stuff for free, you can go over to youtube.com slash Dimension 20 show. We have a bunch of free seasons of the show up there. You can see if you like it. Um, and then... Uh, 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 so you can find me if that's, that's where you can find me. You can find me on Twitter at Brennan LM and on Instagram at Brennan Lee Mulligan. Yeah. And chat knows I have to put a comic reference in every stream. So Star Trek is the one, um, Starstruck is the one. Make sure you are checking that out. Uh, and the last official D&D Beyond question, Brennan, do you have a favorite dinosaur? Uh, Triceratops. My favorite dinosaur is Triceratops. Right. I love them. Incredible. They, they are herbivores, but they do not take any guff. No guff will be taken by this herbivore, my friend. Love them. And with that, uh, apparently we crossed 1,500 uh, as we got to the end of that yeah. screen in advance fundraising for Wave uh, the Rape Crisis Center. Um, please tune in to Streaming Survivors this Sunday to see Pentable 5 Longfoot and a band of amazing friends taking on level 20 challenges for charity. I hope you'll be there. Uh, it should be a lot of fun and do a lot of good for a cause that is very, very dear to my heart. So my thanks to all of you for doing that, for showing up, for being part of that, for spreading the word, for whatever you can do to support it. And of course, thank you, Brennan, for giving us so much of your time today. We can't wait to watch. Uh, Amy, a, a joy, a, a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, and I can't wait for Sunday. We'll see you next time on D&D Beyond. <laughs>